This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. The year is 2011, and Riot Games is hosting the first ever League of Legends World Championship. The event only had a couple hundred spectators present, but garnered over 200,000 viewers watching live. And the 200k viewers back then? I had no idea they had that many. 200k back in the day is pretty much the equivalent of 2 to 3 million nowadays. It is insanity that they actually got a number this high. In 2011, anyone remember that year? The start of League of Legends? You know, the pretty much dark ages? No constant lockdowns, no threat of nuclear annihilation, no 500,000% uh, spike in mental illnesses. How did we live back then? It, it truly was the Stone Age or the Dark Age. Prize pool of such event was $100,000. Okay, that's not though too much, but honestly, the first Dota tournaments were played for a prize pool of like five bucks and maybe here's a, here's a bus ticket if you're lucky. So 100k wasn't bad money. One year later, these numbers would become insignificant. Oh. The esports viewer base increased dramatically, and Riot went from paying their players thousands of dollars to now millions of dollars. Oh my god, it's actually true, by the way. The League of Legends professional salary is literally in the millions nowadays, especially if you're like really, really, really good. But admittedly, if you're really, really that good and getting paid millions, you probably have absolutely no life out of uh, training and, well, more training. So, you know, maybe they get a lot of money, but you definitely have a hundred times more spare time than those people. So, you know, it's a trade-off. And the rest is history. As the years went by, League of Legends never slowed down and only kept growing. However, as the scene became bigger, some people started having questions about the participants. Because although esports had evolved in every way possible, one thing did stand out. That's Why big. are there no girls? This made people wonder Because girls are icky and gross. Wonder if there was literally something in the rules that stated women Also, they're probably all in the cosplay section. Women couldn't compete in League of Legends esports. But the answer was no. Gender was not an issue. To be a participant in the LCS, all you had to do was be over a certain age depending on your country. Instead, the simple answer to why there are no females in professional League of Legends is simply that there are no female players at the level of the professional Currently. I can actually explain this statistically, why, why, why there are no females. So first of all, if we assume that maybe at best 10% of the po uh, 10 of the population of League of Legends is females, that means that only uh, that for every one uh, one, uh, one female that tries to be competitive, there's ten uh, there's ten men that are trying to be competitive. Well, nine men that are trying to be competitive. Most of the time, most people are not trying to be competitive. So let's say from a million people. Roughly, maybe 10 people are actually going to be extremely competitive when it actually comes to that. And when you do the odds, there's a very slight chance that a woman is going to be in those 10 people. And furthermore, you know, you have a lot of situations where uh, women don't actually want to compete a lot. Uh, a lot of the times they have different values, they have different interests. So... A lot of women who just play League of Legends, and there are and there are a lot, they do it for different reasons. They don't have the same competitive drive to do that. For example, I currently think that the best player in the world is either Faker or Chovy considered. Not 100% sure, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But those people are like... In how many years League of Legends has existed, and in how and how many people are as famous as Faker and Choi? Well, they're currently two out of hundreds, if not thousands, of people who have played competitively League of Legends over the years. So, in ten plus years of League of Legends existing, there have only existed two players of that caliber, which means if we want a woman to be of the same caliber. And there's a, there's a one in a one in ten chance of a woman being even a competitive player. You would have to uh, wait like most likely a hundred extra years for a woman to appear as good as Faker or Chovy. So 
you see where the problem statistically is. Players. But we're gonna put a pin in this for now and come back to this topic later. Because the exclusion of women in esports actually ended up spawning teams that would entirely consist of women. The goal in law of these teams and is to prove that girls- And they have all been hilarious. Like the time that five supports got banned because that was an effective strategy against them. Mwah. Gamers are just as good as the boys. This is their words, not mine. But how could they prove this when some of these teams would barely compete in anything as pro I mean, that's all Lissander, that's bullshit. Professional players. These teams aren't participating in any established leagues or tournaments. Instead, taking a look at a team like Pandacute, an all-female team from Hong Kong sponsored by Razer. Who is not sponsored by Razer at this point? Everyone's sponsored by Razer. They specifically only competed against other random female teams. At no point would these all-female teams be able to prove anything. But all this would change in 2018 <gasps> with Vevictus Esports. A team who participates in the LCL, the Russian equivalent of the LCS. This was just cool. a regular esports team. It was entirely comprised of male players. But at one point... A sausage fest. A classic. It seemed that the organization was struggling to fund their professional team. They dropped all. Yeah, most likely because the heads of the organization were constantly drunk on excruciatingly high amounts of vodka. It's a classic. All their players and put up their franchise slot up for sale. Going once, going twice. No one bought it. <laughs> no one bought it. What the fuck are you supposed to do if that happens, by the way? This would force the org to still participate in the league, despite the fact that they already threw away all their players. So apparently, the only logical solution was to create a brand new team consisting of female players. I mean, as long as they're hot, I have absolutely nothing against this. Now, regardless of how bizarre this situation was, Ooh, this decision would create a dynamic which until now- Look at how happy he is. <laughs> Look at how happy this guy is. He fucking knows this is gonna be his only interaction with a female for the next upcoming decade. Now had never existed. For the first time ever, a team fully comprised of female players would be competing in a tournament officially organized by Riot Games. This Why aren't they all so fucking happy? This meant that despite how unlikely it would be, there was actually- Oh, let's check actually the picks. Uh, they're this side, right? Because it looks like they're gonna get absolutely demolished. Uh, Lissandra, Sejuani, Ahri, Jinx, and Lolo. <laughs> uh, this is great. Actually, a statistical chance that an all-female team could make it to Worlds the highest level of competitive League of Legends. Spoiler, it obviously didn't happen. Of but course, in some good alternate luck. universe, Faker is crying because he lost to a player named Triggered. <laughs> is that real? A player named Triggered. Oh yeah, that's actually real. <laughs> Trigger. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, 10 out of 10, of course. Triggered. The story of Vevictus plays out like a movie or a show that starts off by telling you how the story ends. You just don't know how they're gonna get there. And I say this because after participating in two splits of the LCL, they were officially removed from the tournament. Oh come on, you shouldn't do that. They tried. So let's rewind and ask the big question. What happened? Oh god. Let's begin on day one. February 16, 2019, the inaugural match of the all-female Vevictus Esports. Hell yeah. 20 men's 12 kills against one kill. Not bad, not bad. Oh, and the kill's on the support, so you know it was a lucky one. They lost 12 to 1. However, tomorrow they play again and will have another chance at proving themselves. I wonder what happened. Post-match thread. The Victus Esports versus Vega Squadron. 31 minutes, 37 nice. seconds, 52 to 2. 
lives. <laughs> Man, that's actually hard to do. Those uh, those guys probably didn't want to let the match end. Oh my god. Team people get a 14 day suspension for less. Me and the boys. Smurfing in iron. Yeah, if I had this suck. KDA in a ranked game, I would be banned. My girls almost That's true. had them draft was slightly off, but it's a good progress. Ne <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time, smiley face. I mean, you gotta get, keep your spirits if you just can't let every little setback go well, like 52 uh, kills against 2 kills um, destroy your morale. You know you have this. For those who aren't entirely League of Legends savvy, a score of 52 to 2 is horrible. With no That's probably a record, by the way. Exceptions. With a disastrous opening game, Vivictus Gaming instantly became a meme within the League of Legends community. The, the English speaking oh, world would generally have no reason to care about the Russian professional scene. Perform I mean, the Russian professional scene has barely any reason to care about the Russian professional scene, scene so why would anyone else care, right? Performances in Russia would barely ever get traction on the League of Legends subreddit, but there would be a thread created for each and every single match of Vivictus Gaming. Now, of course, not, of course. not all of these threads were that popular. After the first couple headlines, people got the message. There's a pro team in Russia consisting of all female players, and okay, okay, wait a minute. This is the money shot of all fe female players. Okay, boys, let's rate them left to right or light to right to the left. Okay, let's start from here. A redhead, pre busty, doesn't seem to a tattoo on the arm. That's kind of a minus for me. Uh, seems like absolutely fucking blatantly crazy. And I have seen her somewhere before, but obviously the cutest one is always in the middle. Again, remember, life is not about being smart or good. It's about looking good, because if you look like trash, no one's gonna like you. So yeah, obviously the best one is in the middle. And then this one is also pretty decent. And this one is also not that bad. Hmm. Yeah, th I, I like this part. Th this is decent. This was a decent team. And they suck. So over time, this became old news and people moved on. Until one month after their infamous debut, they would make headlines again. This time because Vivictus Esports broke a record. The record for the fastest defeat in the LCL. Jeez. On March 3rd, 2019, Vivictus Esports lost a game of professional League of Legends in 13 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the concede timer can only be used on 15. To put that into perspective, an average game of League is about 30 minutes long. A yeah, and the average game of League roughly has like one, uh, 0 0.5 kills per minute or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of boring. Additionally, in order to surrender, the game requires you to have played at least for 15 minutes. This event would unfortunately completely solidify the Victor's esports as a joke. Also, if you know anything about League of Legends, you know that the objective of the game at its core is to take down towers and destroy the enemy team's nexus. Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. Well, despite this literally being the objective of the game, Vivictus Gaming would go on to destroy their- Wait, actually, do they even get towers? Because look at this, like, their scores are always abysmal. Do, do, do they even have tower kills? If you think about it. He brought up towers for a specific reason, so that's my question. Do they even have tower kills? Their first ever tower oh. in their 11th professional match. <laughs> Two- <laughs> That's great. Put their performance record further into perspective. I want to ask you if you follow any traditional sporting teams on social media. No, I'm less mentally retarded than the average sports fan. Yeah, because basically every team's Twitter or Instagram will make some sort of neat graphic at the end of each match, I had announcing no idea. whether they won or lost. Oftentimes showcasing the best player of the night on a win, and then on the flip side leaving a we'll get him next time sort of feel on a post announcing a loss. And Damn. as of recently, esports teams have taken to this trend as well. 
Recently? Ah, oh, this seems lame as fuck, not gonna lie. And they picked this gaming were no stranger. They ended up posting a total of 11 back-to-back graphics. Wait, 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 let's read the fucking comment. Stranger. They ended up posting a total I the Ah, oh, come on! Stop it. Oh, uh, let's keep go Victus uh via via no idea what that means again. Ended up posting a total of eleven Improve, learn, practice, do not surrender. <laughs> we will always be supporting you. I bet you will you goddamn simp. Seven back to back grab Go, go, Vivictus, keep fighting, girls. You girls are awesome. You have our support from Brazil. It's actually, women, women do actually support this. That makes sense, obviously. But yeah, there's actually a lot more support than uh, ripping on them, which would, you kind of assume, be the obvious thing to happen. Graphics, all of which were announcing that they lost. It took 11... <laughs> Seven games in a row for whoever was running their Instagram account to decide. Wait, why the fuck is there a dude there magically? And that. Uh... Wait, they trained? They should train a little more. I really do not know what's the purpose of your team is. I I don't think they go up. There, there. Look at the big picture. This is the perfect pipe to only fans. Admittedly, everything nowadays is just a pipe uh, pipeline to OnlyFans because they, that's where the real money is at. Even for this dude. No idea what what he even has to do with this, but you can bet your ass that he tried to uh, popularize his OnlyFans from, the, from this spectacle. Besides that, uh, okay. This whole winning thing isn't gonna happen, is it? Oh yeah, we actually had in the last video about female League of Legends players the fact that... One of them got success in OnlyFans after that. <laughs> and it really didn't. The team ended their competitive career yeah, on a historic 28-match lose streak. They Damn. actually also participated in a mid-season summer tournament. There they played six games and lost them all as well. Fucking why, though? Well... So if you include those, they actually ended on a 34. Damn, match. look at that. These boys going by, shaking hands. This is probably going to be the only time in their lives they are going to get the ability to touch a woman without a lot of screaming. Oh, yeah. They, they, they won that day. They won more than they thought they ever will in life. Lose streak. And by the way, that's the magic number. 34. Damn. It took Riot Games in Russia 34 games to officially remove. Sincerely, Riot, to evict us. Okay, after 34, your 34th game, we have to come to the conclusion that you guys are trolling. <laughs> Don't come back. Evict this gaming from competing in the LCL. Now, you might think that this was a complete disaster for the Vevictus organization. Oh! Oh, the organization. I thought that, he, that, that this video is also going to have a part where we talk about how now they have successful OnlyFans careers. <laughs> well, it's extremely believable at this point that that is the course that's going to happen. And I don't know the company's logistics, but some... Fun fact. Fun fact, a lot of the... Uh, the vi footage used in this video happened to be low quality. This is because Riot Rush deleted most of the original was with blah blah blah. Okay. Companies logistics, but some would argue that it was actually a success. Sure, these girls embarrassed themselves at 34 different events, but if the company at all believed- If they didn't kick them, they would do the 35th also event. Like, they were getting paid. There's absolutely no fuck. They, they, they should have. They probably had absolutely no fucks given. They're getting paid. Doesn't matter. No. In any publicity being good publicity, then they succeeded. Because, believe it or not, this team actually acquired fans. Remember those Instagram posts I talked about earlier? Well, while looking through them, I found a lot of encouraging comments coming from Vade. Oh boy. Purple hair, no, blue hair manlet with a beard, oof. I'm saying manlet out of uh, sheer reflex, by the way. 
Despite the defeat, the girls already showed an improvement. Uh, gradually, they will fit the game better and they will achieve a victory. I'm always in the crowd. <laughs> Girls, I know where you are. I know where you sleep. I know where your hotel is. I know where you may. <laughs> Amazing. Oh yeah, that that's the support I bet they want, boys. I bet uh, one like. They kiss supporters. Now, of course, some of these dudes were straight simping, but others appeared to be just fans who wanted to support the underdogs. In this case, these fans were supporting a team who would always have almost no chance of winning. But there was still a little bit of a chance, and obtaining just one victory would make everything worth it. Of course, that never happened. <laughs> oh, wait, that was a support killing a caddy. Yeah, that, that, that was a support Nami. Killing in the misfortune. Man, oh man. Everything worth it. Of course, that never happened. Yeah, predictable. And that's the end of Vevictus Esports. After being removed from the LCL, the uh, team is now... Yeah, this is pretty good. Oh, she's not looking that hot anymore. Okay. Participating in... Oh, she looks a lot better. Okay, I'm a Vevictus fan now. Well, what, what do you know? I'm a Victus fan all of a sudden. In all female tournaments instead. There's no shame in simping as long as you don't actually spend money, you know? However, despite all of this mess, I actually still think that the day when a female pro comes to League of Legends is actually coming soon. But it... I mean, it could actually happen, sure, because we don't necessarily need a uh, faker slash choby level of celebrity and power. A creep in League of Legends competitive scene. A competitive female player could come probably soon. It will most definitely. If someone actually tried. But the thing is, most do not try. Not come in the form of an entire team built around female players. Because that's a gimmick. Instead, there will one day be a female player who is at the level of the current professional skill level. And this isn't so crazy of an idea. Just a while back, a team in Brazil who participates in the Brazilian equivalent of the LCS actually signed their first ever female player. Her name was Mayumi and she was a challenger support main. I could talk oh. at length about that situation, but for the cool. most part, it was a quick glimpse of what could happen when the integration of female players... What do you mean, quick glimpse? Is it already over? ...is done correctly. And like I said, I believe that this scenario is coming very soon. Come back to this video when it happens. But on Actually, this video is probably like a couple of years old, so <laughs> did it happen? Till then, continue browsing the internet safely with ExpressVPN. A VP oh, cool, VPN. At least it's an ad at the very end. Anyway, uh, that was pretty fucking hilarious. I'm always in the crowd. I'm always in the crowd, boys. Oh my god. Anyway, like and subscribe. This was hilarious. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.